So this is the Retro 51 Tornado, and before I'd been given this pen by my friend Bill for Christmas, I had never heard of the brand Retro 51, and upon doing a little bit of research into this, into the brand and their history, I have absolutely fallen in love with the brand. So pretty much started in 1990, and their aim is to make pens that have an aesthetic from the 1950s, and I absolutely love it. So this is the Retro 51 Tornado. It was launched in 1990, two years before I launched, uh, funnily enough, so it has a little bit of history. When it first launched, it only came in the colours red, blue and green, but since then they've been adding to their collection with different styles, including this one. This is the Lincoln style, and it is an absolutely beautiful um, copper, bronze, brushed metal um, pen. It's absolutely beautiful and I have a little soft spot in my heart for this pen because it is pretty much the most unique fountain pen that I have. Uh, and I pretty much have to say that it is probably one of the most beautiful fountain pens that you can buy for under $50. Uh, one thing that I'll also mention is the box that it comes with, or when I say box, it is really more like a cylinder. Absolutely beautiful with beautiful western style um, art on it. Though the cool thing is they have several different arts that they put on these boxes and it is pretty much random and they are all absolutely beautiful. So, let's get into the specs of this fountain pen. So capped, it's 13.8 centimeters long. Uncapped, it's 12.7 centimeters long. And posted, it is 15.9 centimeters long. And in terms of the weight, it is 32 grams posted and 18 grams uncapped. So you can instantly tell from those specs that this is a very nice and heavy pen. And you'd expect it, given that the um, body is this wonderful piece of copper bronze. Um, 32 grams is very nice. That is pretty much up there with your Jin Hao X450s and 750s. And posted, it is, it is really nice to write with. The only issue that I have with posting it is, if you don't use enough force when posting it, the pen can slowly wobble. And as it wobbles, the cap will become loose and loose and it will fall off. But uh, you really do have to push down hard and it will stay there. Me personally, I choose to use this pen uh, unposted because 18 grams is very nice for an unposted pen and when it's unposted and when you write with it it is absolutely a joy to write with it's very ergonomic it's only about uh, 12 millimeters in diameter at its max and the grip is about 11 mils in diameter and it is so comfortable to use in terms of being used posted, it is very comfortable to use, though this little step down here is a little bit annoying, but it's not that bad. Uh, in terms of the grip, the grip is made out of plastic, black plastic, in contrast to the metal body, and that's all right. The only issue that I have with it is on first impressions, it doesn't leave the best impression, because this is a very solid metal body and the plastic doesn't feel as solid, doesn't feel very dense. Uh, I thought it was a little bit cheap compared to the rest of the body, though over time I've grown to love this because this plastic is very, very, um, I don't know what's the, what, what the word for it is, it's very oil phobic I guess. It does not pick up oils or anything. You can write with it for so long and it is going to be very um, non-slip. It's very wonderful to work with. So let's now talk about the cap, something that I don't normally do with pens, but this one is beautiful. So let's talk about the clip. The clip is very stiff and it's very nice. The way that they've shaped it means it doesn't get caught on your shirt or blazer pocket um, and it stays there and it just will not um, slip or anything. Very stiff and very nice to use. On top of that is this little ring that says uh, Tornado Trademark. Obviously you've got to put a trademark logo on it. Uh, by Retro 51, which is very nice engraving. And on top of that, they've put this very beautiful knurled section on the top, which pretty much makes this pen um, distinguishable from any other pen. Very unique and very beautiful. If we look to the main body of this pen, as well as the clip, you can tell that this pen is quality because it's made from this bronze copper brushed finish and it's very good. It's very durable, it's very tough and it's very stiff. There is no way that you're going to be scratching this very easily and there's no way that's going to dent as easily as say a Lamy All-Star. Very nice to hold. 
also it's that it doesn't pick up oils and it doesn't show oils or um, dust as much as other pens do. Now if we undo the pen, you can see that it doesn't take many um, turns to um, undo the pen. Something that I'm not the biggest fan of, the pitch is only about two, two and a half, and it's not very nice. I always like it when there's a large section of thread, and while that is a little bit, little bit annoying because it does mean you're gonna be here for ages, you know, unscrewing the pen, but it does mean that the pen will be um, fastened in correctly, it will be screwed in tightly, and it's not going to unscrew or it's not going to break off or anything. I really do like um, pens that have large um, pitches, and this one does not. But, that being said, it is a very um, good um, uh, thread here. There's no way it's going to break metal on metal, and here it's what? Metal on... Um, metal on, on a very hard plastic, no way this is going to break. Just a little bit of a nitpicking there. If you look at the converter, this is the converter that you have to buy. It is made by Retro51, but thankfully it is made as a um, standard international converter, which I do love and I wish everyone would use standard international converters. Though, uh, if you don't want to use this standard international converter, you can buy Retro 51 cartridges. And I've got to say, Retro 51 cartridges also come in beautiful wrapping like pen. Absolutely, I love the aesthetic that they use there. Their designers are absolutely awesome. They are just beautiful. Though I've got to say, they're not the biggest uh, cartridges in the world, and they don't have the biggest um, color range in the world. But they are absolutely awesome. Uh, the converter is pretty good. It is a little bit bigger than the converters that you'll get in your Jinhao fountain pens. And you do need a big converter, because even though th this is a bit of a dry pen, for some reason, the ink doesn't last all that long. It's only lasted me about two to three days with um, moderate use. So let's talk about the nib of this fountain pen because the nib on this fountain pen is absolutely amazing. This is a number six size nib, which is bigger than most fountain pens you're gonna find at this price point. It is bigger than anything you're gonna find on your Lammies or Pilots. And it is really nice because it is manufactured by Schmidt in Germany. These German nibs are always really nice to use because they have a high quality control. But funnily enough, when I first received this pen and I first bared eyes on it, high quality is not what I would have thought because the words greeting me on the nib was Iridium Point. And in my experience, every time I've bought a pen that says Iridium Point on it, it's usually a fountain pen that's from India or uh, China. And these Iridium nibbed pens, well, the pens that say Iridium nib, really they don't they're not very good, they're usually very scratchy, they don't run well, they're just very bad nibs. So I was a little bit scared, but thankfully it's actually made by Schmidt and the nib turned out really well. So let's talk about why it turned out well. This is a fine nib and they've done their grinding on this fine nib really well. Uh, strangely enough, this has a fine nib, but it acts more like a Japanese fine nib rather than a European fine nib, which is odd because it is a German company and they should be using European standards. But I guess nib standards are just very here here, they're not actual um, standards like ISO standards or anything, but it is a very fine um, nib point and it's very, very nice to use. It's not butter smooth, but it is very nice, and it's very comparable to my um, Pilot Fine Nib. Though, one of the things that I do love it over my Pilot Fine Nib is the fact that this is a little bit of a flexy nib. Now, it's not a flex nib or a semi-flex nib, but when you push this pen, it can really flex, and there is certainly contrast that you can see. I'll stress this in the writing sample, but it is a very, very nice contrast that you can push out of this pen. In terms of um, flow, it's a bit below average, but thankfully it is wet enough so that it will never railroad. I was doing, you know, um, flexi riding on this pen. I was doing it quite a lot and it did not railroad once. This is a very reliable pen, a pen that will never skip on you or anything. You can stop using this pen for quite a few days, come back, and it will certainly keep on working. I absolutely love this pen. I love using it on Clairefontaine Rhodia and even using it on low quality paper, which 
this review was written on, well, the bullet points anyway. So, without further ado, let's jump into the writing sample and let's see how this pen works. Welcome to the writing sample for the Retro 51 fountain pen. This has a fine nib and even though it is a Euro nib, it is more like a Japanese fine. The ink that it's using is Parker Quink. Blue. Um, paper is Clairefontaine. Let's get into a writing sample. The first writing sample I'm going to be using is with very little pressure. Alright, and as you can see from that writing sample, it is a very nice fine nib. I can squeeze the quick brown fox into one line of writing. Flowed well, um, it was absolutely a joy to use. Certainly a little bit of feedback, but um, nothing I can't handle. It's very, very nice. Um, very little line variation at all. I was just doing that, you know, just at a regular pace. However, if I slow down, I can certainly squeeze some line variation and make the writing look beautiful. So, let's do that. Let me just bring the page down a little bit. And as you can certainly see from there, you can squeeze out beautiful line variation. The contrast is absolutely amazing, though you can certainly see that you do need a little bit extra room to write the same amount of writing. I could have probably written lazy up here, but you can see that it does certainly take a little bit longer and it certainly does take up more space, but it is absolutely beautiful. And I would love to receive writing you know, like that. I'd love to write like this all the time. Um, let's do fast writing because this is not the wettest pen in the world, but it can certainly keep up with, um, ugh. Um, as you can see, well, you can see two things. A, this kept up, and B, I can't talk and write at the same time. I'm a guy, I can't multitask but certainly kept up with the writing demands. In terms of writing lines, you can see this is certainly nice and fine, and there is very little uh, natural line variation. If we look at line variation, just quickly, and that's as much as I would actually want it to um, push it to, and it really does flex. It is beautiful. It is stiff, you do have to push down, but you can certainly flex it. It's absolutely wonderful to write with. Absolutely beautiful writing. Not a flex nib by any means. Not the wettest pit in the world, either. Yeah, average, certainly above average for a um, fine nib pen, but just average in general. In terms of reverse writing, you can do it, it's very dry. I don't know why you'd want to do it, but you can certainly do it if you want to. And I'm pretty sure that is it. I'm, I hope you see this pen in the future in a, in a top 10 video, because I really do genuinely love this pen but until then thank you for watching